Thanks to Bandai Namco Entertainment UK and Germany, Tales Ambassadors Sheena and Lex got to experience firsthand playing Tales of Arise for the PC. We'd like to extend our utmost gratitude to them for helping us out with this video. Okay, off we go. Note that the game they played was a preview build and not the full build of the game, hence some features may have not been available yet. This trial mainly lets us experience the battle system firsthand. Note that for this hands-on, Sheena played using a PS4 controller, while Lex played using the mouse with the keyboard. In the beginning, you would be asked to pick one of the playable characters, but it was possible to switch between them, both for battle and on-screen character at any time. We believe the character selection screen was more of a demo-only thing, most likely. It would only affect which tutorial box for their character-specific feature would pop up, which is their boost attacks. For example, with Rinwell, you can hold and delay the activation of her magic after casting. And for dodging enemy attacks, Dohalim's staff will extend, similar to Leia's in Tales of Shion's boost attack downs flying enemies and makes them available for a set amount of time. The overall battle controls are both familiar yet new. Basic attacks were triggered with the mouse button, or for those with controllers, R1 for the PlayStation and RB for Xbox. Free run is possible by default. The base combo would be three regular attacks and staple arts like Demon Fang and First Aid are of course part of the repertoire. Above the character's HP are their attack points, which work in a similar fashion to the CC in Tales of Graces. There is also Overlimit and Mystic Arts. Instead of pressing one art button plus a directional button to alternate between attacks, three out of the four buttons, the last one is for jumping, are linked to six set arts, three ground and three aerial. In the arts menu, there is an indicator of whether an art will be taking you up or down, not leaving it entirely up to chance to be airbound or not. By using the digital pad, you can activate special attacks or boost strikes of each of your party members if the blue strike indicator is shown. The trial had only three combinations, but there will be more in the game. Some of them have even been shown already in promotional videos. The battle system felt more focused on aerial combat, which people who like doing elaborate combos should enjoy. Though it is entirely possible to stay on the ground and just smash your way through. You may feel that there are not enough art buttons available without needing to change via the menu. And while the combination attacks do look really cool and the animations are comparably short as compared to your mystic arts, sometimes the animation could feel a bit too much over time since they really do happen frequently. Another new feature would be the ability to use perfect dodge. If you get the timing right, you don't take damage and are even able to counterattack. There's a dedicated button for it, but it may feel like a regular backstep if the timing is off. Enemies can also have weak points. If you hit them, they take more damage or can also be stunned. Sometimes, those points can be targeted directly, although in the trial you had to adjust the position yourself for the boss fight. The biggest change surely would be the addition of CP or Cure Points. There is only one gauge for your entire party, and it is only depleted when using heal or support arts. Unlike attack points, CP will not be restored over time. It either requires the use of items or resting at an inn or camping out. Due to the CP not restoring without help, it may seem that the game is encouraging players to try dodging. Aiming for the weak spot also may make battles a bit more tactical, at least if you want them to. People who can't seem to get used to battles, don't like them or just want to enjoy the story can do so by changing the difficulty. Instead of easy, the difficulty is called story, for people who want to enjoy the story and not get stuck with battles. Trying out all of story, normal and moderate, and you could really tell the difference, especially between story and normal. For example, you would do more damage to the enemy and less to you on story mode. Between normal and moderate, the major difference was that enemy attacks hurt even more. Something that was really enjoyable was the interaction between the characters, both during the fights but also outside on the field which really isn't new since we got it in Tales of Hysteria and Berseria. It was fun to hear them exchange lines, sometimes really funny ones, 
since it makes up for the lack of victory skits since it feels like they share the same purpose. This should be a good place to fight. Wow, Kisara! It's so big! You're, you're talking about my shield, right? Moving onward to field exploration, it will be familiar to anyone who has played Tales of Exilia, Exilia 2, Zestiria, or Berseria to have a fully movable camera as well as search and interaction points on the map. Search points are not entirely random. Like if you stand next to a plant, you might get herbs or berries. If you approach a cow, you may get milk. Since Arise introduced the ability to swim, you can also catch fish from the water. Depending on what you would pick up, the character might actually do the motion to lift it from the ground instead of just receiving the item by clicking. Each character opens up chests with their own special motion or reacts when jumping down a cliff and getting out of water. Aside from your party, the enemies are closer connected to the environment as usual, whether it be a monster giving off electricity while in the water or a golem moving out of the earth to attack you on sight. While you still enter a separate battlefield when you come into contact with monsters, there are now markers on your screen if there are any enemies nearby in a certain direction outside of your field of vision. Near a fireplace, it is possible to camp out, which restores HP, CP, and also lets you use cooking. The environment lacked the sort of cartoon touch that we are used to in previous Tales titles, but it was still very colorful and pretty and overall extremely enjoyable. A favorite surprise of ours in the demo was seeing a farm of rapigs, reminiscent from Tales of the Abyss. The immersion still felt very much like Tales, thanks to all these little details. It didn't feel like they intended to give the game super realistic graphics, like some of us may have feared over the initial videos or announcements, but only the intention of giving a Tales game prettier graphics. In this demo, it has been achieved. For us, Berseria already felt very pretty, but Arise is stepping up its game even more. It doesn't mean it's not a Tales of game anymore though. Characters are still very much weirded out by finding apple gels in strange places. Should this really be here? These little details we enjoyed, but there are really too many to name even in such a short demo. A few examples would be Shion sneezing when getting out of water. Or Rinwell tripping after jumping we'll down, do worrying if anyone saw her mess right? up. Compared to most footage we have been shown before, like the Calaglia Wasteland and Cislodia Snow Area, the one in the trial, El Demenancia, is much more colorful and has distinctly different subparts like a ranch. The graphics may be somewhat realistic looking but retain a soft feeling, giving it the look of a charming picture book. Time in-game also seemed to pass and the lighting changed accordingly. The most important thing from the trial is that despite everything, it still feels like a Tales game. And we know that which parts make a Tales feel like a Tales game will differ between people. But at least for our ambassadors, it still felt like one. This is mostly credited to the characters, but also all of the small things we mentioned before. Trailers alone are not enough to convey this. The strongest opinion seems to be the lack of multiplayer, but our ambassadors having played for a couple of hours themselves, it feels that the battle system is optimized for single player, even if it is a shame. As for victory quotes, they could have been added, but as stated earlier, the characters talked so much during battle that honestly, they weren't really missed. One thing that our ambassadors had trouble getting used to was having the R1 or the top right shoulder button on whatever controller you're using as the default attack. You can, however, fully customize the button, so you may consider doing this once you play the actual game. Since the gameplay was done via a stream, we can't really say much regarding loading times and graphics between the versions. All in all, our ambassadors enjoyed playing this demo. They expected it to feel foreign, but it actually didn't. After fighting with the controls a bit, they did, start, they did enjoy the game and immediately was pulled in by the familiar details. The funny comments or exchanges by the characters, the rapids, it quickly made our players feel at home. You wouldn't really expect starting to like the characters based on such a short demo, but you will. Visually speaking, the game looks pretty despite the fact that the streaming platform was used for this test. If you still have your doubts about the game, which is understandable, please do give it a chance if you can. We have this hope and feeling that we will all be pleasantly surprised with the game. Our excitement to play the full game really went over the roof after this demo. And we know we'll be putting down all our other games once Tales of Arise comes out. Sure. Great!
Again, we would like to thank Bandai Namco Entertainment Germany and UK for helping us try out this demo, and for our Tales ambassadors Sheena and Lex for sharing their opinions on the game. We have a more comprehensive article version of this video available on our main site. Please do check it out.